Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to go over question 76 to 78 of section 3 of the Pink Booklet. So this is a question about monosaccharides, and we're told a little bit about their nomenclature here. Um, so I've drawn out the two examples, an aldo and a keto. Um, so an aldo, we're told that has an aldehyde group, so there's this carbonyl group, this double bonded oxygen at the end of the molecule, whereas a keto has a uh, this carbonyl group in the middle. Um, so that's the difference between them. And then there's just the normal sort of numbering. So tetro means four, hexo means six, and so on. Then we're told about a stereocenter is, um, which is something you might have already come across before, but we'll come back to why that's important when those questions ask for it. So question 76 says, consider the structure of the following molecule, which I've copied out here. Uh, it says, which of the following best describes this monosaccharide? So what the examples have given us it is uh, whether or not it's an aldo or a keto and then a number and then you put os on the end. So what if we were to um, work out what the name of this would be? So there's one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentose and this carbonyl group is at the end of the chain. So it's an aldo pentose. And then it asks about stereocenters. So that's going to be a carbon, as we said, with four different groups attached. And I'll change the color to make this a bit clearer. So we know we've got five carbons here, so let's look at them in turn. Does this one have four different groups attached? No, because it's got this double bond, it's actually only got three groups attached. Um, what about this next one? So it's got a carbon on one side and a H and H, and then uh, a bit of a longer chain. So this one is a stereocenter, as is this one, as is this one, and then this has two hydrogens, and because two of the groups are the same, this isn't a stereocenter. And so that means it's got three stereocenters. So the answer for this one is going to be an aldopentose with three stereocenters. So 76 is going to be A. Okay, so 77 says, consider two monosaccharides with the same number of carbon atoms. One contains an aldehyde group and the other contains a ketone group. Which of the following best describes these monosaccharides? So I have a bit of a diagram here, and this is going to be useful to explain this on the next question. I think the, the way that I'd go about this question actually answers the one after it as well. Um, so hopefully this is, is quite clear then. So it doesn't actually matter what number of carbon atoms there is. Let's think in principle about um, the pattern we saw with the last one. So other than the, the terminal groups here, every carbon in the middle was a stereo group. So if we have an aldose, it means we have our aldehyde group or carbonyl group on the terminal terminal carbon, which means it cannot be um, a stereoisomer or a stereocenter. But we also know that there has to be at the other end of the chain uh, this HOCH2 group. And because it has two hydrogens, it can't be an isomer or a stereocenter. But every carbon in the middle can be. So out of the, the number of carbons and number of stereocenters, it's going to be the number of carbons minus two. What about for a ketose here? So we've got our normal ones at either end that we can't, so that's us at minus two, and then we've got this one carbon in the middle that's double bonded to this oxygen, which means it can't have four groups attached to it, so it can't be a stereocenter. So then the number of isomers that the ketose could have is the number of carbons minus three. So looking at the answers here, we're asked which of the following best describes these monosaccharides. And we know that this aldose will have one more stereocenter than the ketose from this bit here. So that tells us the answer to 77 is going to be and then 78 says consider the number of carbon atoms in an aldose and a ketose and the number of stereocenters in each so we sort of got to that in the previous one so this is just building on what we've decided before and the number of stereocenters um, in either the aldose and the ketose will be what in relation to the number of carbon atoms so the number of stereocenters in the aldose this is what this tells us is going to be two fewer than the number of carbon atoms. And that's none of the options here. Well, what about for a ketose? Well, the number of stereocenters that a ketose could have is gonna be three fewer than the number of carbon atoms. And then that gives us 
a nice answer for question 78, which is D. So that was quite